What's up guys, my name is Andy, and on today's video, we're gonna install a rear sway bar on my 1966 Mustang. These cars didn't come with a rear sway bar, so adding anything is gonna change the handling characteristics of the car, and it'll be paired nicely with the front sway bar that I've recently done. The bar itself doesn't look like much. Um, it's, it's shaped to go around the rear differential on the car, and then we'll just, uh, we're gonna mount the bar to the axle and then we're going to drill some holes in the frame rail for the bushings and the, the end links that, that go on the end of this here. Let's take a look at the hardware that we're going to use. So I went with the Hellwig manufacturer on this rear sway bar and partly because of the way that it attaches to the rear frame rail. I like the way that they do it and so I think this would be a good, good bar for my car. So what we've got is we've got some instructions on how to install it. We've got some pictures and they go through what you need to do which is great. And then here's the rest of the kit. All the miscellaneous uh, washers and bolts that we need. Here's the end links. Here's the U-bolts that go on the axle. So this will bolt. This will go in here like that, around the axle, and then this will be underneath there. And this is what will hold the sway bar. And then we're going to put the bushings inside the end links here and, uh, and get everything hooked up. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna need to do a couple things first. We need to go ahead and get these bushings greased up and put on the bar, and then we need to get the bushings installed into the end links. So let's go ahead and get that done first. Now we have to take the bolt out of the breather tube for the axle. So we just go ahead and put a 916 socket on this and we'll just unbolt this right off of the axle. And the reason for taking this off is we're gonna put a spacer underneath this vent to get the bracket for the sway bar to mount on the axle. Out of all the pieces, there's only one of them that's this thicker washer. It's smaller in diameter than the rest of these. This is the one you want for the spacer of the vent tube. And once you get it all lined up, you can go ahead and tighten it back down. All right, so now that spacer's in, and that what that did is it just lifted these lines up so that we can put the U-bolt for the uh, sway bar mount underneath there. All right, this is kind of where you get a chance to see how the bar is going to sit you know, uh, you gotta try to, you wanna center it in between the rails there. You can see the end of the bar is, you know, the distance that it is from the rail. Then you go to the other side and you kind of get an idea of how far it is from there. And it looks like in this case, I'm gonna need to slide the bar over to the side, this direction, just a little bit more. Um, and what I have, what I find out is that I put it on this side of the vent. I need to put this U-bolt on the other side of the vent, which is fine. I just need to take it apart to do that, but this is where you don't want to tighten everything down yet because you want to make sure that everything kind of lines up before you, you tighten on the bolts for the final round, which you'll save for the end anyways, but at least this gets this, this bar uh, up in place and then we can kind of see how everything's fitting. So I'm going to go ahead and move that uh, over just a little bit farther, just on the other side of this, um, this vent, and then we'll move on to the next part. There we go. Now we got to move to the other side. Now we're good. Now we need to press in these bushings into the end links and we're just going to do it with just with a vise here.
Yeah, that was easy. Also, don't forget, we need to push these sleeves inside the bushings here. So we'll put those in there and we'll press them in. And uh, that way the, the bolt will fit uh, right in there. Before you put these sleeves in, in the bushings, just put a little bit of grease on the outside there. Just make it a little easier to install these. And there we go. Next, we want to put the end link on the sway bar. And you want to start with the, the farthest hole out. Um, and then as, if you find that you need a stiffer setting, you can move it to the inside. But we'll start with the outside one. And you don't need to, to lock it down all the way, just enough to just hold it in place. And what we're going to do is just kind of bend it up. And then we're going to we want to put the bar parallel with the car. You know, so I got the back end of the car up, so it's not going to look parallel right now. But you're going to want to put the bar up so that roughly the bar itself, this part, is flush with the, or you know, it's parallel with the frame of the car. And it's gonna be just kind of an eyeball guess as best you can. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark where the bushing, where the hole is for the end link in the frame rail. And then I'll show you how we're gonna do that next. All right, so what I did was I, since I only got two hands, I'm trying to hold the camera here. I took a, uh, a scribe piece and I once I got the, the the sway bar where I wanted it I just reached inside through the through the hole here and I just marked uh, I just scratched on the frame rail where I wanted this bolt hole to be and it's kind of hard to see but there is a it's a circle right here it's hard to tell there's a little mark there's a circle there that I made where I just kind of went around inside that the bushing to mark where I wanted that hole. The instructions for the sway bar say really just to keep the bar level and then mark where you're gonna put your sway bar. And so there isn't any, any marking that you can use or anything that they have for measurement on where to put it on here. You just want the sway bar just, you know, parallel with the car. And then in the pictures, they show the end link just kind of leaning back just a little bit like this one looks like it's leaning towards the rear of the car. And so we do that and then uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a piece of cardboard and we're going to use it to transfer the hole from this side to the other side and I'll show you how we do that. So we take a piece of cardboard and we, it doesn't have to be very big, just fold it around the frame rail like so and then what we do is we mark on the, the cardboard where the center of the hole is and then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that that mark is the same spot on the other side of the cardboard so we have a hole that's going through here and it lines up with the hole on that side. Let's go up on the bench and we'll, we'll make sure it's in the same spot. So here's where the hole is. As we, you know, we fold this around the frame, there's where the hole. I marked where the bends were so I can keep an eye on where everything is. So if we're gonna be, if that is, we'll call it one and a half inches from that mark to the corner, we'll do an, an inch and a half from here and it'll be the same distance as we wrap it around the frame. So this is where, when I wrap this around the frame, I'm gonna make sure that when I drill the hole on the one side and then when I'm on the other side, it'll be in the same spot relative to each other so the, the bolt and stuff will go straight through and not go crooked or you know whatever, or do some funny angle. So that's the simple way of doing it. There's probably a better way, but uh, this is what the instructions say, so this is what we're gonna do. It also says to scribe a line along that cardboard edge and around the bottom of the frame here so you can kind of get an idea where it lines up on the other side. So we've marked the spot on this side, we've marked the spot on the other side. So now what we want to do is we're going to use a unibit here and we're going to drill a 15, 30 seconds hole on either side and then we'll do, and we'll stop there and I'll show you what we do next. All right, now that we got, we got both holes drilled, you can see through there. Uh, they're 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 aligned. They're pretty close. They're they're close enough for government work, right? Uh, so then on the it says on the outer frame we drill a 11 sixteenths hole, and that's for this to fit in. And what this is going to do is it's going to go in the hole, and it's going to stop at the other side of the frame. It's not going to go all the way through. If we drill a hole the same size all the way through, then this will go all the way to the other side and through it, which we don't want to do. So we're going to drill 
11 16 hole on this side, and then we can insert this in here and start to wrap up this side of the, this sway bar. All right, now that we got the uh, 11 16 hole uh, drilled out for this this sleeve, it just, it just fits inside there now, but we don't want to put it in yet. Um, we want to set up the, the bolt, so we're gonna have a long bolt with a the small washer, and we're gonna have a large washer, then the sleeve's gonna go on the bolt through the frame, and then on the other side of the frame, you're gonna have this washer, and then on the other side of the end link, you're gonna have this washer and the nut. And you wanna make sure you stack it up in that order uh, so it fits correctly. You may find that the washer, the, the bushing sleeve, the sleeve fits, sits outside of the frame like I've got going on here. And so the instructions say that you need to grind this down so that it's the proper length so that there's a 32nd of an inch from the, surf, the surface of, this, of the washer to the top of that. So we're gonna take this off and, and grind it down a little bit so we get it to the right size. All right, so we got that, that bushing cut down to the proper length. So now what we do, we just go ahead and push this all the way through. We need to go to the other side. And we wanna add a washer on here that's gonna go in between the bushing and the end link. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this one on with the last washer and nut on there. But before we do that, we gotta finish the other side first before we kinda of lock everything down over here. So let's do the other side first. All right, now that we got everything in place, I went ahead to the other side and it's it's all bolted up, everything's lined up, everybody's happy. So now we go through and we just tighten up all of the fasteners, you know, on the, the, the U-bolts here underneath the, the rear end. And then the end links, we gotta tighten everything to 35 foot pounds. So we'll go through and just kind of work our way. And when you're doing that, just make sure everything's kind of level and in place and where you want it. And then, uh, and then just tighten as you go and then, uh, and then you'll be done. All right, so. That's another mod done. Um, that, unfortunately, the weather's not cooperating today, so I can't get her out to drive around and see how it goes, but uh, I'm anxious to get out and maybe go around the twisties a little bit and see how she does. So um, I noticed that when I was installing this, uh, you need to be real careful when you're drilling the holes in the frame, you know, that cardboard thing that I had done when I drew the line around and stuff. Um, mine, mine came out fairly good, um, but I think if a guy told me, take a little extra care maybe to line those up, better that might be might be better for you guys um, when you do that also you'll notice that the brake lines uh, are in the way um, in my case the exhaust is in the way even the even the leaf springs are in the way but you need to have the leaf springs in place because you need to have the axle where it's going to be uh, when the car's you know on the weight of the of the spring so you're just going to have to work around that and do the best you can um, but, uh, and then if you have an extra set of hands, it makes it a lot easier in doing this. Again, I'm doing these videos by myself, so some of these take a little longer to do, but definitely can do this on a Saturday morning. All right, guys, um, that takes care of that. Everything's in place, everything looks good, and uh, I'm ready to, well, I can't right now, but I'm ready to go out and drive. So uh, if you guys like the video, give me a thumbs up, and if you subscribe, I appreciate it. It helps my channel out, and we'll see you in the next one.